family hijinks are in store for Teju as we take a turn for the sentimental this hour. Teju is finally face to face with the man he seems to have been trying to forget. Ever since falling into 1988, Teju has been forced to face his fractured past but the more he remembers, the more his world is turned upside down. Episode 6 Recap While attempting to bust the notorious lottery gang, our time-traveling detective Teju and company stumble across Teju's father instead. The shock sends Teju reeling and he flashes back to a happy memory of dad bringing him the game ball before shifting to him sobbing in his mother's embrace. Mom assures young Teju that dad had to leave without warning, but that he loves him and will return soon. However, judging from the dark tones and what appears to be a morning ribbon in her hair, it seems unlikely. Upon returning to the station, fellow officer Nai Young greets the team but Teju is too freaked out to respond. Dad tries to negotiate a trip to the bathroom but officer Yong Ki snaps that if it's urgent, he can go where he stands. Teju steps in and unlocks Dad's cuffs, much to Yong Ki's annoyance. Yong Ki grows antsy while waiting for Dad to finish his business. Ignoring Tejoo's insistence that Dad will be out soon, Yonki bursts in to find Dad tying the door shut with his pants. Dad panics and scrambles out the window and the detectives give chase. They follow him out into the parking lot, where their captain Dong Chul manages to apprehend Dad by opening his car door just in time to send the escapee flying over it. In the interrogation room, Na Young treats Dad's wounds and as thanks, he shows her some cheesy magic tricks with his pen. Dong Chul reprimands him for fooling around instead of writing up his statement, while Teju watches with an uncertain expression. Dad swears he knows nothing of the lottery gang and merely works at the brothel. He admits that he's supposed to be working in Saudi Arabia, but after his travel money was stolen, he was too embarrassed to return home empty-handed. At the mention of his son, Dad brightens and proudly produces a picture of young Teju. Dong Chul chuckles that the boy is much cuter than some other Teju he knows, but muses that they look similar. Dad is thrilled to learn that the young detective shares his son's name and wonders if they're somehow related. Fortunately, Dong Chul smacks Dad in the head with his clipboard before Teju is forced to fabricate a response. Dad grins sheepishly and returns to writing his statement. When Dad has finished, Dong Chul agrees to release him on the condition that Officer Nam Shik accompanies him home and confirms his address. Teju volunteers to go instead and Dad asks to make a quick detour. They stop off at the bathhouse so Dad can clean up before facing his family. Teju stares distractedly at his father until Dad catches him and offers to scrub his back. Despite Tejoo's protestation, Dad insists and it brings forth Tejoo's memories of visiting the bathhouse together in his childhood. Afterwards, Dad takes Teju to the Hawaii room salon, where he's been staying since he was robbed. Dad notices Tejoo's uncomfortable expression as he looks around the closet-sized space. Laughing self-consciously, Dad admits that he had nowhere else to go and this was all he could afford. Unwilling to go home empty-handed, Dad shuffles to the kitchen and fills his pockets with candy for his son. He then starts piling the fruit set out for customers into a basket. Teju asks what he plans to do with it and when Dad replies that it's for his family, Teju snatches it away. Instead, he takes Dad to buy a nicer fruit basket with fresh fruits. Ah, Dad leads Teju to the beauty salon where Teju already knows his mother lives and works. Taking one of the candies from his pocket, Dad offers it to Teju as thanks before scurrying happily to the shop door. Peeking inside, Dad is met with a fiery glare and Teju's aunt bursts outside to grab him by the ears. She drags Dad inside and Teju follows the sound of their bickering all the way to the kitchen. Aunt is furious that Dad sold the house to pay for his trip to Saudi Arabia. Dad argues that he was trying to make money, but Aunt points out that he came back broke. It's all Dad can do to defuse the situation by diverting her attention to Teju. Aunt's demeanor takes a 180-degree turn and she smiles coyly. Her tone softens as she greets him and Dad is stunned that they know each other. This revelation is interrupted by the arrival of Mom and young Teju. Dad immediately scoops up his son and they giggle together before Dad turns to Mom. He bashfully apologizes for giving his wife a hard time. Mom only notes that Dad looks weary and they hold hands until Mom notices Teju standing awkwardly in the doorway. Dad deems their connection fated and despite Tejoo's objections, the family insists he stay for dinner. 
As they gather around the table, Teju soaks up the warmth he's surely missed in his 2018 life, watching as his family dotes so lovingly on his younger self. The peaceful moment is interrupted when the women ask why Detective Teju is with Dad. Teju doesn't argue when his father sputters out a lie that he's helping the police with a secret investigation. Although not entirely convinced, Mom does look relieved. Meanwhile, R continues to flirt with adult Teju, much to his discomfort. After dinner, Teju watches his mother washing Dad's clothes. She smiles, discovering the pocket full of candy, before wincing. Holding her wrist, Mom attempts to ease the pain by applying a hot rag, but Teju steps out and exchanges it for a cold cloth. He tells her a cold pack is more effective and urges her to visit the hospital if the pain persists for more than a week. At Mom's quizzical expression, Teju continues that peritonitis lasts longer than she'd think and admits that his mother was also a hairdresser who suffered the same affliction. He says his mother had to quit working when he was in middle school and suggests that Mom go to the hospital before it worsens. She promises to do so and Teju gets up to leave. Mom stops him to ask if Dad really didn't cause trouble and Teju assures her that's not the case. She wonders how they'll ever repay Teju for everything he's done, and while Teju says there's no need, she insists he stop by for a haircut. Outside, someone calls out to him and Teju turns to find his younger self staring up at him. He takes the boy to the corner store for banana milk and young Teju marvels at their shared name. He asks if the detective carries a gun and is disappointed when Teju says no, but happily settles for playing with his handcuffs. Young Teju says the detective is cool, but his dad is cooler. Pulling a candy from his pocket, the boy hands it to our Teju and says it was a present from his dad, but he'll share just one with the detective. Slipping his wrist through one cuff, young Teju hands the other to our detective and they playfully tug back and forth. It's surreal, but so cute. Later that night, Na Young arrives at the bar to find Teju sitting alone with a few already empty bottles at his table. Walking over, Na Young asks if Teju escorted his father home safely. He looks up, surprised, until Na Young explains she was joking since Dad's son had the same name. Teju says Dad got home fine and Na Young cheerfully bounces into the seat opposite him. She asks about the candy piece sitting on the table and a secret smile spreads across his face as he tells her it's a gift from his father. Teju continues that when he was young, his father would bring him something in his suit pocket whenever he went out. I always looked forward to what my father's pocket may have inside. Teju says, and I put my hand in his pocket, and this is what came out of there today. His expression sobers as he pours himself another drink. Teju confesses that he used to consider his father his everything, and thought he knew everything about his father. But that wasn't true at all. Teju finishes. Na Young listens quietly and then asks if Teju has ever seen his father's back. She explains that fathers always want to appear cool and confident in their children's eyes. It wasn't until she grew up that she found out that her father had also been hiding a weaker side that was suffering. Teju thinks over her words and asks if she's going home. Na Young sighs that she has more paperwork to do and asks Teju to pour her a drink. He complies and on the other side of the bar, the barman cheekily plays some romance.